In December last year, a two-year-old boy fell ill and died in a remote village in Guinea. Just days later, so did his three-year-old sister and their pregnant mother. It was the start of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa that has since killed more than 5,000 people and infected many more. Our global health correspondent, Tulip Mazumda, has been to the remote village in Guinea's Gekadu province, where it all started. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. A children's cancer specialist who abused boys in his care has been jailed for 22 years. Miles Bradbury, who worked at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, pleaded guilty to 25 offences against boys between the ages of 10 and 16. Some of the children have since died from their illnesses. A judge today said the 41-year-old doctor had carried out one of the worst forms of sexual abuse imaginable. Sean Lloyd is in Cambridge. Sean. London's airspace. For a time this afternoon, no planes were able to land or take off at Heathrow or Stansted, and all departures were suspended at Gatwick. London City Airport and Luton were also badly affected, and many airports across the UK reported delays. Air Traffic Control says the computer problems have been resolved, but tonight there are still delays and cancellations. Our correspondent Daniel Bircher has more details. Water companies in England and Wales have been ordered to cut bills by an average of 5% in real terms over the next five years. They'll still be allowed to add on inflation, but consumer groups have welcomed the move. Our industry correspondent John Moylan is at a water treatment plant in Berkshire. John. Now, it was a moment of humanity amidst the horror of war, the 1914 Christmas Day truce on the battlefields of the Western Front when British and German soldiers laid down their arms and played football in no man's land. A century later, Prince William has helped to unveil a memorial to mark the event. Natalie Perks reports. Thousand Jaguars and Land Rovers worth millions of pounds. The Herga Sarka was deliberately run aground when it started listing dangerously after it left port in Southampton. Salvage experts are expected to take days to decide how best to refloat it. Well, Duncan Kennedy reports from Southampton. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. The oil giant BP is cutting 300 jobs from its North Sea operations, with industry bosses and unions warning that there could be many more job cuts to come. The company is blaming falling oil prices, which have halved in recent months, and tougher market conditions. Several other companies are also struggling, and the Scottish government is calling on Westminster to reduce taxes on the oil industry. James Cook sent this report from Aberdeen. It's Britain's biggest retailer, used by millions of customers, and until recently it was one of the great corporate success stories of the past decade. But now the company's announced big changes to try to revitalize its flagging business. It's closing 43 existing unprofitable stores and shelving plans for 49 larger supermarkets. But how will this U-turn affect the communities where they were going to build them? Our correspondent Emma Simpson sent this report from Dartford were nominated this afternoon. Benedict Cumberbatch and Kira Knightley have been chosen for their roles in the imitation game. Eddie Redmayne and Felicity Jones, who plays Stephen Hawking and his wife in The Theory of Everything, have also been nominated, as has Rosamund Pike for her role in Gone Girl. Our arts editor, Will Gompertz, looks at the secret of their success. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. Two men killed in anti-terror raids in Belgium yesterday were hours away from carrying out a plot to kill policemen, according to the authorities. Weapons, money, false papers and police uniforms were found during the raids in the town of Verviers. Today, more than 25 people were arrested in anti-terror raids in France, Germany and Belgium as police tried to thwart more attacks by people with links to Islamic extremists. But the police agency Europol has warned that their sophisticated methods are making it extremely difficult to stop every attack. From Brussels, Robert Hall reports. The number of people waiting more than four hours in accident and emergency departments in Wales and Northern Ireland rose last month. In England, hospitals improved but still missed their target again of seeing 95% of patients within four hours. The figure in Wales was 81% in December, the worst waiting times in five years. 
Northern Ireland fared even worse, with just under 77%. In England, around 90% of patients were seen within the recommended time, an improvement, but still below target. In a moment, our health correspondent, Bramwyn Jeffries, reports on efforts to improve the situation. But first, Hal Griffith on the problems in Wales. Deep million pounds, and its mission, more than a decade ago, was to land on Mars. But it disappeared in December 2003 as it neared the red planet from where it was supposed to start transmitting data back to Earth once it had landed. And it hadn't been heard from since. But today, scientists announced that they have found it. Here it is, these grainy images showing it on the surface of Mars just a couple of miles from its intended landing site. Our science editor, David Shookman, reports. St. Peter's Seminary near Glasgow, it was built in the 1960s to train Catholic priests and was widely considered to be one of the most important examples of modernist architecture in Scotland. And this is what it's like today. It's in such a terrible state that there's no hope of restoring it properly. But now it's been given to an artist who has big plans for it, as David Silito reports. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. Unemployment has fallen again and earnings are up according to the latest figures. The number of people out of work in the UK is now at a six-year low, down by 58,000 in the three months to November to 1.91 million. The unemployment rate now stands at 5.8%, though there are significant differences around the UK. And wages are outstripping inflation, with the average earnings increasing by 1.8%. Our economics correspondent, Andy Verity, reports on the nature of the jobs recovery. They're called northern white rhinos and they are on the edge of extinction. These animals, prized for their valuable horns, have been hunted by poachers for decades. Now there are just five of them left in the world. Conservation experts are desperately trying to find a way to save them. Our science editor, David Shookman, has been given special access to one of the last survivors. HMS Victory. She was Lord Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, but more than two centuries later, she's in urgent need of repair. Hundreds of thousands of people flock to see her every year in Portsmouth. She's one of the oldest warships in the world, and now she's facing a new battle of her own. Well, our correspondent, Robert Hall, is there. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. The Prime Minister, David Cameron.